the sickness. One of my kids already is feeling bad. And so I ran upstairs and took a zinc lozenge, lozenge, lozenge. Right on. So let's see. We're, we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the second edition of Gun Gossip. I'm going to have to mute my channel here. There we go. We got to mute. All right. There we go. Hey, everybody. Second episode of Keep Calm and Carry with Gun Gossip Johnny. I appreciate everybody swinging by and checking the channel out. I appreciate all the support. I hope this doesn't um, conflict with a lot of people's schedules. I know I said Thursday, but I've got something happening on Thursday, uh, and I wanted to shift on Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, other other times, other where across the world and everything else. So I've got my drink right here. I've got a good, good friend over on the other side of it. You Everybody knows Gun Gossip Johnny. If you haven't, it's 180 Second Ideas. Go check him out. It is all about your, well, you know what, Johnny, go ahead and take it away. You tell me. What is it about? Hey, Mark. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate being on the number two episode. I watched your first one of the first episode of Keep Calm and Carry. Thought it was fantastic. Glad to be here. Uh, I think most of your viewers and my viewers, we all know each other, a lot of the same folks. But if anybody does and I do a, a gun channel, I do things really quick. So I do pretty fast reviews and also do a little bit of comedy over on Gun Gossip. So a little bit of everything, a lot of the same stuff that you do. We have a lot of the same manufacturers that we trust and that we enjoy. So again, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. I'm getting, getting text messages here. I'm sorry. I'm kind of second, 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 second string here. So I apologize for that. Johnny, uh, what are you drinking? What am I drinking this evening? I have a Yeti cup and it's full of H2O, as always. I believe in hydration. Right on. Well, I've got uh, I've got scotch tonight. It's been one of those one of those nights. Cool. So, um, all right. So, I want to get a couple things out of the way here real quick with uh, with the channel. Uh, obviously, Fit and Fire. If you guys don't already know, I am doing my 2,000-ish giveaway uh, for people viewing the channel. You guys, um, I really appreciate everybody's support. All you need to do is go find my 2,000 subscriber giveaway and like and comment. That's it. And you're entered in. And this Friday, I will draw a winner. I'll have a special guest uh, with that drawing. So by all means, go do that. If you follow me on Instagram and you follow me on Facebook, I have a separate giveaway uh, over there for you guys to partake in as well. That is going to be a Olight M2R Warrior EDC light. So go check that out and see what uh, what you guys can do on winning that. So um one other thing I wanted to bring up real quick, uh, a friend to the channel, Bald and Curious, if you guys haven't checked his channel out, by all means, go over and check that out. He wanted to have me uh, do a quick plug for the CMAX um, support. Uh, you can find that at www.ucare.com slash chrismaxwell-876962. Once this uh, broadcast is complete, I'll move over to um, put that into the description so you guys can come back and revisit that. And we would really appreciate you supporting the CMAX um, um, charity. So with that being said, uh, real quick, I just want to say hi to all the people that are out there. BR549. <laughs> Love that. Good to see you. Good to see you. American Made, 1999. Always great to see you, Scott Atwater. Uh, the Reaper, always great to see you. Appreciate your support. Uh, there's this 182nd Ideas guy. Uh, thanks for being here. Stephen Worth, CW Hunter, Alaskan Ballistics, uh, Janice Gay, and Rick Aches. Uh, Rick H., I appreciate you guys swinging by. All right. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Johnny, what is your EDC? What do you carry? You mean, what do I carry all the time? What am I carrying today? Or what is my thoughts with EDC? Which direction are you going here? 
Uh, let's go for today first. Uh, today, I pulled it out because I thought you might be asking that. I am carrying, no big surprise. I know a lot of times people like seeing very exotic things, but it is a Glock 43. And I've done a few things to it, but it's a standard 43. I got the Crux Ord Plus 2. I have a Crux Ord. Uh, what are those things in the front called? The the uh, rail? What's it called? The guide rod. Guide rod, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got a guide rod in there, and then I've got some uh, True Glow sights up front or front and back tritium sights. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I keep with a, a firearm that I might be having to use for protection. I keep it bone stock. I don't mess a lot with the trigger and those sorts of things. My Kydex holster today is from TriStar Holsters. They're down in Chattanooga. I've never got to see any of their stuff before. It's called TriStar. But so far, so good with that. It's an appendix holster. And then I'm carrying actually the flashlight that you just mentioned a bit ago. It's the M2R Warrior, I do believe it's called. And really enjoyed that. I got a new one in the mail just today. It's the other one. It looks just like this, but it's got a different top. And I don't really know what the difference is, but it's another O-Light just like that. My knife is a Kukri from Cold Steel. And that's called the Raja 3. And then my wallet is, a lot of people have seen these. This, this is from Black Moose. It's a, not really a wallet. It's more of a money clip, but I really like this. And I've got a couple different of the Black Moose wallets. So that's my, my carry. A lot of people want some, to see something a little more exotic than a Glock 43, but it works and it goes bang when you pull the trigger. How about you, Mark? What you carry? That's all that matters. Yeah, right now is the winter carry for me because it's been pretty cold here recently. So I've got a brand new outside the waistband holster right here. Um, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. I'll have a review naturally for it because one of the great things about it is the fact that it is made specifically for the Olight PL2 Valkyrie, which I just placed on my Glock 19. This is what I carry. I'm a Glock fanboy. Everybody knows it. Um, and you know, I talked a little bit about it last week, but I'll go ahead and get back into the specifics. I've got a uh, uh, Zev upgraded trigger pack, um, Mariglo IDOT sights, uh, which are great. And everything else is pretty, pretty well stocked. The ammunition I'm using is G2 Defense. They're Talos uh, fragmentation hollow points, which uh, are pretty awesome. I'll have a review on those coming up here pretty soon. So, Are you testing those? Uh, are you testing that ammunition for the channel? I am. Yes. As a matter of fact, I have it already done. I just haven't had a chance to pull all of the video together. Uh, I was able to shoot a water jug. I didn't do any type of ballistic testing or anything like that, ballistic gel, but I did a water jug and I was actually able to um, capture some of those fragments. So that was actually pretty cool. And I'll have uh, more information on that as the, uh, as the things, uh, as I finally get all this stuff together. So yeah, that's that's what I've really got going on. I, I guess I got a, a knife, uh, the knife that I've been carrying. I just started this knife here this week. Um, this is by a company called Kube. Um, they're they're a Chinese company, and uh, this is their uh, four inch hunting Damascus knife. Uh, it's pretty nice. I like I like the look of it. Um, you know, it's nothing expensive, but uh, I saw it on eBay, or excuse me, Amazon, and uh, yeah, it, it looked pretty cool, so I thought I'd give it a try. And so far, it's sharp, and it stabs things when you need to, so, and um, that's about it. Uh, I carry a uh, hardened case wallet, which I don't have with me. They're in my uh, my uh, other pants, <laughs> and uh, it's a RFID blocking type of wallet, so um yeah, so there you go. That's my that's my EDC. Let's jump over here to the uh, to the comments real quick and see what's going on. Um, uh, see what we've got. Any questions for you guys? Just go ahead and start throwing them in. I uh, see that we've got uh, seventy seven six or busts has jumped in. Glad to see you there. Thanks for swinging by. Um, and yeah, the ammo, cool beans. Yeah, I, I think so. So far, it was pretty cool. It's uh, one of the things I'll say about this ammo is surprisingly it is lighter than I had expected. It's I think a 95 grain uh, projectile, which I'm used to uh, 115 grain on my nine millimeter. So just uh, food for thought. So, all right, Johnny, next question, pitching it to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on training? Are you mean specifically firearms training? Yes. 
You know, I think a lot of gun guys, especially those in my position, I do not have a military background like you do. And a lot of guys just will not stay in their lane. I'm a big believer of staying in your lane. Know what you're good at. Know what you're not good at. And I have had almost zero training. I mean, I had a ton of training. People are going to laugh at this, but growing up in the Boy Scouts, a whole lot of uh, 22 training. So that was really important for marksmanship. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to college, I went and took uh, riflery from the ROTC department and absolutely destroyed everybody in the class, including the instructor. And it was just Boy Scout training. People thought I was some sort of a wizard with a rifle, but it was just pure Boy Scout training and and. That, you know, people are going to laugh about this. That pretty much ended my formal training in 1994. So I haven't done a ton of training. I watch a lot of videos, but I've never done a pistol course. And I'm a tactical soccer dad. I shoot holes in pizza boxes, which you've heard me say before. Yep. I've never been to an IDPA match. I've never had it. I've never timed myself shooting. So where am I? I, I just want to say I'm going to stay in my lane. I know where I'm at. I think it's beyond valuable. I think I need to do more. I've done a ton of stuff online. Um, but I've never done any where you actually go and do some training. I got a couple open invitations from a couple guys. One of my dream courses is the warrior poet, John Lovell. I want to go take one of his pistol classes. So Absolutely. where am I with it? It's very valuable and I haven't done it. How's that? <laughs> That's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I've been lucky enough to train with Thunderbird Firearms Academy out of Wichita, the great bunch of guys there. Uh, and of course, naturally I've had uh, some training with the military. So um, it, it's, it's interesting to take into perspective other people that have not had the time that I have had in the military, because I, I think it's kind of second nature when I start feeling rusty, I feel like I've, I need to start branching out and, and looking for, for trainers or, or just even going downstairs and doing some dry fire, um, practice. But, um, I, I recommend personally that everybody gets to some type of defensive pistol or fighting pistol class. It doesn't have to be the tacky cool guy. It can be something laid back that's talking about how to draw and present your weapon from how you carry it on a daily basis um, and and get that uh, get that going there. So um, how about um, since since you haven't been in much uh, training, Tell me, tell me if you've ever been caught in a situation where you've been grossly unprepared. Does anything happen like that for you? You know, I think most people would, would immediately go to maybe be in a situation without a gun. I think most of us live in relatively safe areas in North America. I mean, I have been in some really, really bad neighborhoods outside of the United States. And again, probably nothing like the military guys have, but some pretty fairly bad stuff. I think for me in 1992, I moved to Dallas, Texas to a neighborhood called Oak Cliff. It's where Dennis Rodman's from. And it's where Lee Harvey Oswald was found. That's where he ran to uh, after. Oh, wow. Am I back on here? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So I think for me, I was really unprepared mentally to move to that neighborhood. I got mugged in the first semester I was there. Um, I had a bad incident on a city bus. I think for me, it was less about firearms training and more just about a mental mindset. Uh, today, I'm in a lot of big cities. I'm in Cincinnati regularly, and I know how to negotiate a big city. And for me, it's been more about situational awareness than anything in getting myself prepared. Very good. Very, that's actually some really good comments. One of the things that I like to try to pay attention to and some of the things that I uh, picked up from our, our buddy, Sean, um, is the fact that uh, there's small things that you can do on a daily basis just to keep yourself st safe. Like if you go to a restaurant or – would you figure it out, dog? Jeez. Sorry, my <laughs> German Shepherd over here does the little spinny thing 15 times before it finally lays down. Anyway, um, so Sean was saying, you know, there's small little things that you can do uh, to pr protect yourself. Like if you're at a restaurant or something like that, that you can place yourself uh, with your back to a wall or so that you can see uh, the entrance. You can kind of monitor people coming in and coming out. Um, it, sound, it may sound a little um, paranoid, but I've started to do it here recently, and it really changes my perspective and raises my awareness. So small little things like that uh, on a daily basis. So I've got two things I need to address here real quick. Number one is I've got a 
I've got a subscriber here saying we need a Palmetto 308 range day video. Rick H. Yes, you do. I am working on that. Um, just wanted to give you a quick update uh, is um, I'm trying to get the round count up on the PSA or PA 10 Gen 2 to about 200 rounds. I want to get the, the bolts uh, and the breach kind of married up and worked out a little bit before I start really getting into the accuracy because I'm going to try to stretch its legs as much as I possibly can. So uh, I appreciate everybody's support on that video. And I just want to let you know that I'm trying to get that uh, up and running here pretty soon. Um, I also had another um, viewer chime in real quick about the um, the new adaptation of shotguns. And Johnny, kind of like to get your take on this is what is your opinion of the magazine fed shotguns that are coming out from Mossberg and Remington's kind of new for this year? What's my opinion on a magazine fed shotgun. It's cool. They go bang when you shoot them. I haven't seen one in person. I've seen a lot of them online, but they go bang. They make loud noises. They smell great when you fire them. I don't know. I don't want to talk about the nuances or the specs. Give me bullet. You turned off there, Johnny. I think I'm back. I was complaining there about shotguns. So if they go boom, I like them. Well, you know, it kind of fits into uh, one of the one of the areas that you're exploring right now with that uh, Remington 870 that you're trying to upgrade. Um, shotguns is not something that I'm really used to. So, um, you know, I've had some and I hunt with them, but outside of that and outside of my like half dozen three gun shoots uh, where I've actually shot clay pigeons and steel targets with shotgun, I don't have much experience with them. So um, I think it'd be faster, but I think it, Personally, I think it's kind of, I think it's excessive, you know? And, okay, I get it. We're Americans, you know? It's America. I don't like <laughs> excessive things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. want to be shotgun nuance guy. You know, if anything, I am not nuance guy, and I don't like nuance guy. I don't want to talk about the nuances of shotguns. Pull the trigger, does it go bang? I think shotguns are fun. I mean, me and my buddies, we do, uh, we throw clays up in the air and miss them a lot. And I think that's a lot of fun. I think there's not, not much more fun than going with your buddies and shooting skeet out of the air. It's a lot of fun and it's fun to get it kind of dialed in. So overall, I like shotguns. I don't know. It's a, it's a magazine, put bullets in it. So somebody's going to um, sound off and go, there's not actually bullets in a shotgun shell. Don't be yeah, that guy. <laughs> don't be that guy. Yeah. Jack <laughs> wagon of the week right there. Right. Yeah. So Swoops um, has said that uh, they are buying their first pistol this month, and I live in California. What do you recommend on a budget of $400? Well, that's actually a, a really great uh, question. I would actually kind of have to defer to some of the channels like Tact California, The Daily Shooter, um, The Gun Guy TV. Uh, those, those three channels are actually from California, and the reason why I'd have to defer to them is because – they have already a list of approved pistols uh, for California. Uh, the Glock Gen 4, Glock Gen 5, I think, are not on that list. And I don't even think the Glock 43 is on that list either. So that's something you're probably going to have to do some research, maybe go in and, and talk to a few people at uh, some gun shops or maybe if you know some FFLs. Uh, you got an opinion on that, Johnny? Uh, I would like to speak up for the other 49 states. Uh, no, I don't have an opinion on that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've actually watched a lot of videos from those three channels and, um, you know, a lot of people kind of say, hey, if California is so bad, why are you still there? Why are you not moving out and everything? And, that is such yeah. a douchebag. I'm sorry about the, that language. I know it's a bad word, but that's such a D-bag thing to say. You go to somebody who's got a job and family. It's where they're from. You're like telling somebody, why don't you leave your home? Hey, buddy, why don't you leave your home? I can't stand when people say that to Californians. Now, to be fair, I think it. I'm like, what are you people doing out there? But to actually say it out loud, that is such a not fair thing to do. Anytime somebody mentions California down in the comment section, some uh, nitwit will say, well, why don't you just move to Texas? Because it's hot and flat and it's not where they're from. <laughs> people have jobs there. It's such not a fair thing to say to people, although I do think it sometimes. Yeah, 
All right. So let's do a little quick uh, rapid fire session here. Uh, you've already you've already shown us your Glock 43, which was uh, a pretty cool pretty cool little Glock that you've got got there. I may or may not have carried that a couple of days while we were in Georgia. Uh, but, uh, well, you did carry it and you put your belly sweat all up on it. You carried that thing alone for people that doesn't know Mark flew into Georgia. I drove in and I brought Mark, my Glock, and, uh, he promptly put that thing up on his belly against his skin and sweated for two days and then handed it back to me. Thanks buddy. Hey, no problem. I'm here for you. By the way, <laughs> Uh, that was actually a little bit closer, not to my no, belly. No, stop. Just stop. Stop. <laughs> Weirdo. I know it. I know it. Okay. So um, let's uh, hit up. I got three questions for you. First thing that pops in your mind. I think I know the answers to it, but here we go. Favorite gun. You answer it. What am I going to say? You're going to say the IWI Jericho. Jericho 941F, it's big, it's fat, it's ridiculous, it's heavy, yep. it's impractical for carrying. I can't get enough of it. Holy <laughs> smokes, that trigger is unbelievable. It is crisp. I go all the way to the back of the range, and I fire from there, and I can make targets ping from the back. And I'm not even a good shot, and I can do it. Love that gun. Pretty awesome. What would you say if uh, we could work out something to get you a CZ Shadow 2 to compare it to? You broke up a little bit. All I heard was CZ Shadow 2 to compare it to. What about it? I was just saying, what 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 would you say if we could find a way to get one of those to compare the IWI Jericho to the CZ Shadow 2? I would lay down on the ground and probably cry for a little bit. I've never even seen a Shadow 2 in person. Ooh. It's uh it's my top one of my top five dream guns. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That that's something new. I did not know that. Okay, moving on. Favorite knife. It, it's probably going to be that Kukri from Cold Steel just because it's sentimental. I like it. Um, there's a lot of knives out there. I'm not a big nuanced knife guy either. I mean, I think knife channels are some of the worst things in all of YouTube. Guys that are cutting paper, they, they you can get, I mean, you can take a $1 kitchen knife from the dollar store and make it cut paper. And so, I don't know. I just, I just think knives are cool. I like them. Uh, I like that Cold Steel. I know people make fun of Cold Steel a little bit. I like CRKTs. Um, probably, actually, I'm going to show it to you. This is going to be my favorite knife right here. So my grandfather, Zeb, was a stonemason, and he was from the old, old school. And this is uh, Whalebone. I think it's called Whalebone. It's an Uncle Henry from Schrade Cutlery. And he was remarkably abusive on products. In 1984, he handed me this knife, and the sides were all gone, and he had used the, uh, the blades as uh, a screwdriver had torn it all to pieces. I've never told this story. In 84, he handed me that knife. It was all tore up. He said, this son has a, uh, it's got a lifetime warranty. Uncle Henry will send you another one. Now this is before the internet and I was 10 years old and I didn't know anything about nothing. And I said, well, where do I send it to? And he got all gruff. He said, well, how should I know where to send it? Just send it off. <laughs> and so I called down to the local gun store that I actually still shop at now, I called down to Mahoney's in Johnson City, Tennessee and said, hey, can y'all give me the number to Uncle Henry? And I wrote it down. I shipped it off. And this knife came back in the mail about six weeks later. And so that, that is absolutely my favorite knife. I carried it in the Boy Scouts. It's been to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, I love that knife. It's never been sharpened. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Um, okay. Uh, favorite belt for EDC? Uh, I'm going to let you try to answer that one as well, because I'm pretty sure for viewers that don't know, Mark and I are pretty tight and uh, there's not a lot of secrets between us. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> what belt do you think I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm wearing right now? Um, oh, well, I haven't I haven't actually seen it's a trick today. question. I'm I wearing know. no pants. I'm in. <laughs> I'm not wearing pants at all. <laughs> it makes two of us. Uh, <laughs> the, we're all going to stand up here in a minute. I know, right? The, so I'm, I'm carrying the, uh, right now around my waist, I am wearing the Blue Alpha Gear Hybrid Cobra. I have the full-size Cobra by Blue Alpha Gear, but I wear the hybrid because you can get it in your belt loops. And that's what I wear most of the time if I'm not wearing dress clothes. Hmm. Very good, very good. I've got a, um, I don't even know what it's called, but it's a leather belt. It's really thick. I bought it at a gun store. Um, I talked about it last week on my live chat. I think it was the Jason Weenie. Uh, I think is what it's called. I don't know. Um, it just seems kind of funny to say that. So yeah, Jason Weenie, 
leather belt, uh, double thick, pretty awesome. And it's kind of classy, you know, you could wear pretty much anything, you can wear jeans, slacks, whatever. So I kind of like that. Um, all right, I've got one more question when it comes to the EDD, EDC stuff for you. Um, what is something that you carry most days or, you know, however often you do it, uh, that most people wouldn't think about or you think is kind of odd? Uh, there's a couple things I do. I mean, I always have, and I mean always, I had it out just a minute ago. I always, always, I mean, since, since the nineties, I've got Carmex on me and that's just, I don't know if it's an addiction or whatever. This is the new strawberry flavor. So I think this is superior to the cherry, but they're both superior to the original Carmex. Love me some Carmex. A long time ago, a friend of mine uh, looked at my wallet and my keys and he told me, you got to get all that mess out of your wallet. Cause I had every card you could ever possibly need. I had the big George Costanza wallet. Mm -hmm. So I went down, I figured out what I'm actually going to use on a given week. I got everything in there. Plus my insurance card, just in case. Uh, the thing for me that I do EDC that I don't understand that people don't do is I separate out my keys. And so I don't carry the, the key to my mom's house, the key to my mother-in-law's house, the key to every lock I could pot potentially ever use. Because I think most EDC guys are way, way overprepared. And somebody's going to sound off in the comment section, you can never be overprepared. Well, you can fill your pockets up to the point where if you fall in water, you're going to drown and sink to the bottom. So I separate all my keys out. I've got my car key and then my one office key. And that's all I have. And I got everything else on a separate key ring that I just leave in the console of the car. So EDC, what I'll do a little bit differently than most people is I separate out those keys. What do you think about that? That's pretty good. Um, I, I have well, thanks, like, thanks for the vote of confidence. Really appreciate well, that. Pretty good. It, you know, it, uh, underwhelmed much <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Because we come from two totally different, schools of thought. So you, you talk about being overprepared and people, you know, drowning because they have 15 pounds worth of stuff. Uh, and, and I'm the, I'm the type of mind that, um, you can never be overprepared. Uh, one equals none, two equals one. Um, those types of things. With that being said, I carry two, I, I carry two keys, my, my the key to my Jeep and, uh, the key to my safe and that's it. Well, um, you, you're saying that you're the, the two is one and one is none, but you're also the, the guy who is ounces equals pound and pound equals pain. So which one are you? I have, I have an identity crisis right now. You were having an identity you crisis. Blew my mind. You just blew I'm my sorry. mind. Oh my goodness. See, and that's what, that's what gets you freaking treat me up because you've been watching all of my stuff, right? And you've been picking up all my nuances. You got me there. Oh, you got me there. Make me look like a fool. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. That's what we're doing here on the old. Uh, what's this show called? Keep calm and carry. Is that right? Yeah. Keep calm and carry. So the idea of, we'll of this live chat is to talk about EDC. Talk about some of the things that have changed since the time that you started. Necessary, maybe when you started carrying uh, on a daily basis, and then also we're going to transition now, kind of into uh, the carrying heavy things and drinking coffee, right? So there's a fitness side to my channel. If you guys don't know, I do workout videos. Uh, and, and one of the things that I wanted to mention in my 2000-ish giveaway video is that um, I'm, I'm going to adapt my channel a little bit. I'm going to start moving all of my workout stuff to my social media. So, so to my Facebook and to my Instagram, I'm going to have videos on there. I'm going to have... Um, pictures of my workout of that day so you can see exactly what I'm doing and I'll give you a little snippet, a little video of me actually doing the workout. Uh, but my YouTube channel is going to start transitioning to more tactical focused uh, workouts or at least shooting while under stress. So that's kind of the focus that I'm going to start changing my channel in this year and into the future. So um, with that being said, uh, one of the things I wanted to see about you, Johnny, is what, what do you do to keep active? Oh, I'm, you know, I feel really great about that question. I watch you work out uh, often when you start posting your stuff. It's really, really early in the morning and you're at uh, Audio Fitness. Is that the name of your fitness club that I see on Audio Instagram? Fitness. Audio correct. Fitness. Well, I follow you on Instagram, as you know, and I see you posting. Usually I have the cat in my lap and a mug of coffee. And I, uh, my fitness is usually getting up and going and get another cup of coffee. I do a lot of walking. Uh, as you know, I've got, a, I've never shared this publicly, but yeah, here we go. 
Uh, it's not like people are watching and where it's being recorded, but I've got a two inch curve in my spine. You can probably even see me. I'm kind of hunched up like this. And so a lot of anything weight wise messes me up really, really bad. And it's just something I live with. I mean, I'm in my mid forties and what do you expect? Uh, I do a lot of walking. Uh, for me, a lot of taking care of myself is just staying out of fast food and, and eating right. I eat a ton of green leafies. And the older That's I get, the, the better I eat. I do a lot of even stuff that you've taught me of over the months. I do a lot of uh, body weight stuff. And I do a lot of stretching. Like tonight before bed, I will stretch until I am miserable. I love stretching. So I do a ton of stretching for my back. But I don't do a ton of weight training. And you don't either. You don't do a ton of weight training. You do a lot of body stuff and then a lot of uh, kettlebells and smaller weights, but you don't do big strenuous stuff. I don't think. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I've really focused on in this last year of working out with uh, the gym audio fit is concentrating on body weight or low weight because um, there's, there's a big event happening on Friday and um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be, it may be devastating to my, to my mental state. But, well, here's uh, the deal for people not watching. Mark is turning 40 on Friday, and I think it's good for you, Mark. Welcome to the club this coming Friday on February 16th. Mark is going to be 40 years old, <laughs> and I believe, and I think people need to know this. Uh, what are you doing that night? You're gonna, I think you're going to go see a movie. What movie are you going to see on Friday night for your 40th birthday? This is this is not this is not appropriate. For it's for not this. appropriate. <laughs> All right, here's the dealio. We'll just leave it for the viewers. Y'all can sound off down in the chat room if I can take over your channel for a moment. What movie is Mark going to see on Friday night that he doesn't want anyone to know about, but he's going to see it? So we won't say it online, we won't say it out loud, but uh, you're headed yeah. out. I think it's good for you. You're turning 40. Uh, what are you most excited about being 40? I'm um, I'm not excited about turning 40 at all. Um, because, um, mentally I think I'm still 14. So, <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that I really had to change in my life is, you know, I, I am getting older. I'm starting to realize that I'm getting older and I can't, I can't keep up with the kids anymore. Uh, I can't go to, um, uh, 785 CrossFit, which was another gym that I went to. Great gym. Love, love the group. Uh, love the people over there, but I can't do CrossFit anymore. My shoulders are banged up. My knees banged up. My ankles banged up. I got, I've got stuff wrong with my back. Uh, and so just by chance, we ran into, uh, one of the trainers at Walmart, um, which is, you know, the, the, you know, the Target of the East side of Manhattan. And <clears throat> we, uh, just started chatting with the uh, the trainer there because we were wearing our Spartan gear because we just finished our trifecta, and uh, they said you should come out, you should join us. This would be a great uh, great high intensity interval workout for you guys, and, and you can stay up on your fitness to do more of these Spartan races. So we tried it out, and I found that uh, it, it, I really like the hit style of workouts because it's low impact. There is not tons of weight. You're not going to have to worry about blowing out your shoulders or anything else. It's all body, body weight focused or low weight, no more than I think the most that I do on strength days is 50 pound dumbbells on dumbbell press. And that's about it. So, um, so th that was kind of the focus and the change that I had to make in my life. So yeah, so I'm going there. Now it's a weird thing, Mark. I think being 40 is a, is a, uh, well, let me ask you this first is being 40, was it harder on you or mentally or 30? Which was the, which was the bad one? It definitely 40, uh, definitely 40. Uh, and, and I'll have to get personal here for just a second. One of the reasons why is, you know, we've, we've, um, had a, a very, very, uh, dear family member pass, uh, here recently. And, you know, as, as, as I get older personally, uh, those, those people that have been so close to me, um, who are older than me, some of my mentors and stuff like that, they're getting older, they're starting to pass away. So when I was 30, it wasn't nothing. It was just another birthday. Yeah. Or whatever. But yeah. And I think, you know, somebody, I know we're going kind of a dark place here, but it's part of life. I mean, I think part of being 40 is reflecting and these major milestones is about reflection. Life is a series of accumulated trauma that they say, they say that, you know, life, as it goes on, you accumulate trauma, you don't get less trauma. And that could be your shoulders going out, but also can be just losing people. And so, yep. yeah, it's tough and that doesn't go away. And I think it's something that people that have youth just simply don't understand. And who knows where we're, you and I are going to be you know, 15 years from now. Uh, dad stopped me on my 43rd birthday. 
he stopped me and uh, I was out at his house shooting and he said, son, I remember the day I turned 43 and he was born in 46. He said, I remember the day I turned 43. That was the first year that I noticed my parents aging and mm. starting to age a little bit and not act like themselves. He said, this is really weird. The shoe being on the other foot. And it's kind of funny. Uh, dad's a ninja. He's in fantastic shape. Um, he's the one that built the range this summer and he spent two full days with the jackhammer jacking out jackhammering out rocks. I mean, he's in great shape for a, a guy his age. He's in great shape period. And let alone for his age. And for me, it's, it's interesting to, to see him and for him to say, Hey, it's weird. The shoe being on the other foot. I told my wife the other day, dad was doing something. And I, I went and told her, I said, he's doing something. I'm not happy. And it's funny. You hear something like when we were kids, you'd hear old people say uh, about their parents. Oh, they won't listen to me. They keep mowing the lawn or they're climbing trees or they're on the roof, cleaning out the gutters. And now I'm already mad at dad for some of the stuff he's doing. He's doing too much. He was hauling carpet the other day and I was trying to tell him to quit. So age is a funny thing. A big congratulations to you, Mark. Uh, there's a lot of people in the chat room saying congratulations to you for your decrepitude. I think 40 is a great age to be. And regardless of whether it's good or bad, oh, well, it's coming. So let me take a second just to go over to the chat and um, back up a little bit. First off, I'm not answering the question on what movie I'm going to see. So you didn't like that, that question. You didn't like that I at don't, all. Don't you don't see like your face change. You didn't like it. I don't like that question. Uh, I'm, I'm being dragged to it uh, out of my... Uh, out of my, yeah, out of necessity at this point. Anyway, so let's get back to it uh, real quick. Uh, so first off, uh, I got Rick H. asking me if I'm going to Tulsa Gun Show in April. The plan is yes, trying to get there this April. Uh, Dad and I always head out to the gun show at least once every year, if not both the spring and the fall. So hopefully we'll be there. Uh, Jackie, thank you so much for the early birthday. Uh, 40 is the new 30. I wish try being 40 and see how bad your knees are. Um, let's see. Young buck 40. Steven, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Frost mountain says the black Panther movie. I wish big Al says 60 is the new 60. I agree. <laughs> Definitely over the hill, Jan. Yawn, or is it yawn? Is it a soft J? We'll have to find out. Uh, Jackie, just stop, please. Just just stop, Jackie. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the trolling. Um, yeah, you know, definitely lacking in the physical fitness category. Don't worry about it. There's always uh, there's always tomorrow. You can start up again, new tomorrow. Um, and I will say that uh, the Notebook, yes, is one of my all-time favorites because Ryan Gosling, right? Um, Lyle says, uh, "Are you're in Manhattan. I am in Manhattan. Well, wow. we occupy the same area, definitely. Uh, the Reaper says 40 for sure. Well, you know what, Reaper? You're 43, so take that. Um, and let's see here. What else? What else? What else? Uh, you're never fresh and young unless you're still in diapers. Uh, okay, sure. Um, so, soon enough for both of us. Soon yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, considered the gray fox. I've heard that. Um, I'm, I'd like to. I'd like to. Jackie, you are doing your part, and I really appreciate it. Um, and Big Al says, Wanamakers every year. Yes, that's actually a really great show. If you guys are in the anywhere in the vicinity of Oklahoma and you can get to the Tulsa gun show by all means, get out there and check it out. So staying with the topic of being fit or staying in shape or however you want to talk about it, you watching the Olympics at all, Johnny? Uh, you know, Mark, I think it's funny. It's the older I get, the less TV I watch. I mean, less and less and less. I've got a lot of friends that are really into media. Uh, I saw that guy do the, the big ski jump the other day and that's pretty much it. So no, not really. I know it doesn't make for great radio or podcasting what here what we're doing here, but uh, no, Mark, I'm not watching the Olympics. What about you? I am not actually watching the Olympics either because I've been so busy concentrating on a number of other things, specifically for the channel. Uh, I've made some really great connections over the last, I'd say, probably five days that are really going to um, really boost the channel, hopefully. Uh, maybe even get a little bit of legitimacy to the channel <laughs> as well. But uh uh, yeah, I was just going to talk to you about the Olympics. I mean, everybody loves the Olympics. Everybody, it's it's amazing about how divided some people, 
some people think what we are, but once the Olympics come, you know, it's all USA, USA, you know, um, growing up, what would you say would be your favorite indoor winter sport for the Olympics? Mark, I don't even know what to say to you right now. Like you're asking a dude from Appalachia who's sitting in his garage, yeah. what my favorite indoor winter sport is. Now here's the, here's the deal. Life is a series of choices, Mark. You get me on, we could talk about anything. Like there's so much going on right now. I have, I can't turn my phone around. I've got a member of one of the biggest YouTube channels on the planet, at least in the gun world, who I can't even say who it is, sending me pictures of new boas that they're going to buy me. So they are wanting to order and they're all excited. They're sending me, what about this color? What about that color? They're wanting to buy me boas. Now don't get too excited. Boas are $8 a piece. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this world, Mark. And so you choose out of all the words in the English language to pile together and to create a complete sentence. You could ask me anything. You've had at least 45 minutes. You can look at the ceiling all you want. It's coming. You ask, have anything you want to say. And your big question tonight, oh, professional media man, Mark Grimsley, is to ask me what my favorite indoor winter sport is. Um, okay. Touche. You got me there. Let's transition. How, how do you think the <laughs> stock market is going to do over the, the over these next week or so? Tell me about the Let's stock market. Let's go back to the Olympics. <laughs> exactly. I think the fun thing the fun thing about the Olympics is, and I think this is my suspicion. Now I've done a ton of graduate work in media and entertainment theory, and that is true. I've done a ton of work in, in entertainment theory. Um, and there is a lot to what makes something entertaining. My suspicion, I don't think this is a big jump about the Olympics, is that there are numbers attached. How many gold medals did we win? It is so satisfying. They were at, uh, I was at school today on campus, and they were talking about uh, the snowboarder or something. Somebody won this, and somebody won that. And people are like, to your point, we are rallying together and like wearing American stuff, saying, heck yeah, we got a gold medal. I don't know what curling is, but I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was uh, one of the comments uh, from BR549 was curling. Uh, and I would say, yes, curling for the win. Definitely. So there you go. We'll transition um, real quick. Okay. Jackie actually has a question here. It says, Mark, ask him what's the toughest decision he's ever had to make professionally. There you go. Let's transition there. Jackie's got the question for you. Holy smokes. Well, it's interesting you say the word professionally because I've had three and a half careers. So I don't know which career Jackie is speaking to. If there's any viewers out there that don't know who Jackie is, uh, Mark and I both know Jackie at least uh, pretty well and uh, more than acquaintances, maybe less than best friends and somewhere in the middle. And Jackie is a professional journalist. So she's, of course, is going to come out with that kind of question. You say, what's the toughest question professionally? Let me say this. I uh, was teaching a college class a couple years ago and the young man wrapped his truck around a tree and poof, he's gone. Mm. And they came to me and those people and they said, uh, what's his grade going to be? What's it, What's this young man's grade going to be? And he was probably 26, 27 years old. I said, he made an A. We were only halfway through the semester. They said, well, he made an A. And uh, I said, he made an A. And they, they all like they squared off on me and they said, that's not possible there's not enough of the semester has progressed for him to make an A. I said, well, he made an A and I, you know, I, I'm flexible. I'm not going to stand my ground unless I really think I need to. And I told that lady, I said, you can write me up. You can do whatever you want. But the last piece of paper that comes from my office to his mama is not going to have an F on it. The guy's getting an A and I will go toe to toe with you. And that year at graduation is about eight weeks later. Uh, they end up pulling his parents up on stage and gave him a full diploma. And he, he ended up graduating college posthumously. So that was an awkward 10 minutes. I don't know if that's maybe my toughest decision, but that was a decision I made gladly and was willing to go toe to toe. I did go toe to toe for a few minutes gladly. So what about you, Mark? A tough decision professionally. Um, it was the decision to leave the military. Um, it, it, had, there was a number of different contributing factors to that uh, to that decision, but um, it, it has actually taken me on a different trajectory, on a different course in life that I never thought that I'd ever really go. I'd never thought I'd ever be on a live chat with this fine, handsome gentleman. Uh, but 
<laughs> but yeah, leaving the military was was a very very difficult decision. It's a decision that I um, I don't want to necessarily say I reg I regret, but it's a decision that uh, I I sometimes think I would like to revisit from time to time. Um, you know, life takes us in different you know, d through different doors, uh, through different opportunities, you know, there, there may be a possibility that, I don't know, someday I might end back up in the military. I mean, cause there's still that option, but we'll, we'll see how life goes. But that was probably the biggest decision is to hang up a sure thing and enter back into the civilian world and try to figure out how to live life again as a normal person, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. So there we go. All right, let's see here. Um, so you brought it up a little bit before, right? But uh, you're, you're a movie guy. Um, I had two movie questions for you real quick. Number one, what is what is the your favorite movie that's out right now or will be out very soon that you would like to see, have seen, uh, or should have seen? Go. You know, I think for what's out right now, so you're saying what's out kind of out already been out or what's coming out, what's what's best going on right now kind of in this season? I think the answer is going to be the solo movie coming out in uh, May. I think that's going to be the answer. They have not released anything. I think they did the teaser trailer for the Super Bowl. It looked fan stinking tastic. That's an easy answer, but I mean, these new Star Wars, this, this um, era that we're in once Disney took over the Star Wars franchise is absolutely glorious so i think solo is the right answer for that and then we're only another may away one more year from john wick three. Oh, i was not even tracking that oh, my goodness ah oh, that's good that's good uh so we in in the same genre there uh, or not the same genre but in the same fashion what is your favorite gun guy movie Ooh, you know, I think often whenever I talk movies with people, they all immediately go to what's the best this or best that, what's your favorite movie? I think as far as, you know, you say a gun guy movie, a movie with guns in it, maybe Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, the movie with Kurt Russell, not Kurt Russell, Russell Crowe, either one, Kurt Russell or Russell Crowe, either one's fine, but They're I'm going to go with handsome. Russell Crowe. Uh, probably that one just because of the maritime ballistics and uh, those guys having to time out their their ballistics with the roll of the ship um it's it's authentic it's great i read all 19 novels and so that just is really special to me uh die hard of course i mean there's nothing wrong with the uh, with a little die hard probably one of my favorite movies that's not on a lot of people's radar is a movie from the 90s called ronin and it's a spy movie with robert de niro and it has got some excellent car chases in it some pretty cool guns i mean not not nothing, nothing crazy but some really cool guns in it and some excellent excellent car chases what about you mark gun movie gun movie right off the top of the bat is uh actually you've asked me this question before and i've had time to go back through my rolodex and Top movie, I would have to say, right off the bat, when it comes to gun guy, military, whatever the case may be, Heartbreak Ridge. You can't go wrong with Clint Eastwood. He's going to put it, he's going to put together a great movie one way or the other. Uh, and that movie really kind of opened the door uh, to show the the infighting that our military has between officers and enlisted and that officers, oh, they, they think they know everything and then enlisted guys, you know, come in and, and swoop in and tell them, yeah, you're not as smart as you think you are. Uh, and, and, and I think that that was actually a really great movie for me to be raised on because I've watched it at least, I've watched it at least four or five times a year uh, and I've done so for, I don't even know how old I was the first time I saw it, but, um, <clears throat> But I watch that movie very regularly to remind me that, A, I'm not as smart as I think I am. And I think uh, that it, and it's also a great movie to show that no matter how great of a leader you are, you're going to need help. You're going to need to surround yourself with good people to make you a great leader. And that really positioned myself in my military career to not only excel as an enlisted person, but when I transitioned to the dark side, as they say, and became an officer, that really uh, made me realize that it's it's good to be humble 
and, and, and understand that you don't have all the answers. So that, that's my favorite right there. Plus you have a shirtless Mario Van Peebles. And I think that kids today don't know who Mario Van Peebles is. Uh, but, you know, with all of the sunshine coming in, he had 50 different shades of, uh, uh, of tanning going on in that movie. And so yeah. it's a great, great little movie there with a shirtless Mario Van Peebles. Riveting radio we got going here. I tell you what, and, and you know, he was glistening in most of that movie. Yes, so. he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what book are you reading right now? Uh, I just started, I just finished a book on some uh, Greek warfare and uh, the, from the Roman, the Roman occupation of Greece and the, uh, I guess, uh, Southeast part of the Mediterranean. So that was on Mithridates the Great and the Three Mithridates War. Wars. There was three of them. He fought. Mithridates fought all three of three of the greatest Roman generals that ever were, and he fought and defeated all three of them. I mean, that guy was something else. And then, uh, night before last, I just started Black Hawk Down. I've never actually read it. I know it's a classic, and uh, so reading that. What you reading? Uh, so I'm not reading anything right now that has anything to do with uh, that's gun related. <laughs> <laughs> the the book that I'm just now dusting off and cracking open is a book called Strength Finders, and it is a book that uh, specifically drives into finding um, all of your strengths, and it categorizes those strengths into five uh, potential areas. And it's it's a big thing, you know, especially for my day job. It's one of those things that you need to really harp on uh, your strengths and and uh, be able to build yourself up instead of dwelling so much on some of the, um, not necessarily say the negatives, but the things that uh, you could improve on. So there's that. And then there's been a, um, a recommendation from a really, really, really good friend of mine uh, to read uh, how to make friends and influence people. Mm -hmm. Classic over yeah. in the chat room. Andrew says, geez, 22 people are watching and dropping and you guys are babbling on about books. Answer some questions, man. Well, Andrew, how about you go first? You ask us one riveting question and I will answer it. The goal is yours. Take the English language, take all 26 letters, type them into a complete sentence. Good luck there, Andrew, and see if you can get us at least one riveting question. I will answer anything you put down. And he says this, Mark, ask him what's up with the lift. Uh, is that normal or does he have it up to be more flamboyant? Well, Andrew, you've already asked that a little earlier and I ignored it the first time. So what's up with my lisp? I don't actually have a lisp. In fact, I know a whole lot about communication patterns and all of the things that go into communicating. I don't have a lisp. I do have what's called a redneck slash Appalachian accent. How's that for you, Andrew? Thank you, Johnny. I was actually going to touch on that here in just a second and say my that, lisp yeah, well i was going to say you know that's not a lisp that's uh, that's called an accent and, he's trying to get uh, under our skin he knows it's not I, a lisp. i know yeah that's why that's why i ignored it the first time so yeah he's yeah. a jack wagon but he asked it twice you get yeah. what you get andrew you play dumb games you get dumb answers <laughs> big al wants to know where did you get that red shirt i think it's a hoodie technically but uh um, where, where, where did you pick up that, uh, Cincinnati red shirt and why on earth are you wearing it? The funny thing about where I live in East Tennessee is there's no professional sports teams. And so people that follow baseball here, it's about 80% Atlanta Braves and about 20% Cincinnati Reds. I lived in uh, Kentucky as a kid and the very first baseball game I ever went to was Cincinnati Reds. Andrew, I'm sorry if I'm droning on about baseball now you jack wagon and uh, Johnny bench hit a baseball to my feet. I didn't get the baseball. I bought this at great American ballpark in Cincinnati. I bought this one actually at the ballpark. Why? Because we went to a May game and it was about seven degrees outside and I was dying and I went and paid $110 at the stadium for this Nike sweatshirt. Thank you, Nike. Yeah. They're, they're all about it. Uh, all about it. Um, let's see. I just saw one here. Uh, CW Hunter wants to know, uh, have you shot your custom Glock 19 yet? I have, and I have hundreds. Interesting question. I don't have it here with me for people that haven't seen it. It's a Glock 19 gen five. I've got the Hades package from Trident arms. I have shot it. It's got the gas pedals on the side and I've never had a gun with gas pedals. And it was really, really a different experience. Uh, I'm going to be adding a new trigger into it uh, really soon, but overall I'm really excited about it. So it's a custom Glock. It goes bang every time you pull the trigger. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, actually am in discussions with a company to do some upgrades on mine. 
um, do some milling out and do some stippling and yada, yada, yada. So I guess that means I'm going to have to buy a new um, competition gun. What recommendations does the crowd have for my new competition gun? What do you guys think? What competition are you asking about? Do you want to do IDPA? Um, you know, yeah. I mean, mostly I do IDPA because that's what I have available uh, every other Thursday night here. Um, but there is a number of people that have asked me to start getting into USPSA, which I can. The problem is that it's, it's about an hour and a 45-minute drive to get to the nearest MASH, and that's once a month. Um, east of here so that's kind of difficult to get into um i like idpa but at the same time there's so many different rules with it that just seem kind of uh, and then and then three gun three gun will be starting here in march or april so um got some yeah. answers coming in on the chat room mark i'm kind of taking over your show but Absolutely. because i am literate i can read despite my lisp uh cz shadow two that's a like another guy two people have said the shadow two somebody said the smith and wesson bodyguard 380 i think that's a joke uh how about the jonic some people call it the canic or the canic tp9 sfx and somebody said where is bald on this one well that's because he would say grand power and then somebody else said the walther ppq Yep. Uh, PBQ has a fantastic trigger. I would, I would say most Walters do. I just started shooting the uh, H&K VP9, and it has probably one of the best out-of-box triggers I've ever felt um, outside of um, the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 and the Glock 19. I, I really, really like it, but I have some, have some issues with it that I'll get into when I finally do my review. Steve, MP5, I'm actually surprised that you're talking about the Jonic TP nine SFX. I know that you've got plenty of experience with other, other guns and that's the one you pull out and that's fine. That's fine. But, uh, you know, I was, I would, I would think that you'd go in a different direction. A CZ, uh, CZ shadow two is actually, uh, like you said, Johnny on my wish list, but, um, the Rex arms company, uh, they, they produce the Rex zero. They have the Rex alpha, which is supposed to be the shadow two killer. So I'm trying to see what I can do to get my hands on one of those. Um, we'll see. That's so. a, that's that's a tall order right there to have a shadow killer. We'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, about, I'm excited about both of them. I am too. I'll have to. Like I said, it's going to be. It's going to take some time for me to get both of those uh, and and try those out. But uh, Steve Worth has asked, "What is your favorite firearm that you've ever shot?" And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be an MG42. That was adapted to the um, the Estonian Army, so I think they call it their MG3, uh, but it's basically an MG42, 1,200 rounds a minute, uh, and you can't you can't you can't beat that one bit. So <laughs> what about you, Johnny? I one time rolled the dice, and I think most people might you might find this interesting. I don't know. See if you can understand me and my lisp, but. <laughs> I one time rolled the dice over on, is it a gun broker? Is that the one where you like the eBay for guns? I got an gun broker and I wanted a Russian Makarov. I wanted one, the Baikal Makarov. And they had uh, somebody had taken a picture with a potato phone, these terrible pictures and just put $200. So I rolled the dice. This thing came in and it was gorgeous. It wasn't brand new. It was used, but it had a ton of stuff with it. It was fantastic. Pulled it out. I stood in my buddy of mine's driveway and we threw a tin can out and we made that tin can skip up and down, up and down, back and forth in his yard. So my favorite gun ever right out of the box, that bike, that was so much fun to actually spend $200 on a gun and, and have that much fun. So, you know, it's not exactly shooting a tank like you have Mark, but, uh, that's a fun, fun little gun right out of the box at a great price. I still have it. Yeah. That's, that's just interesting. And that's some of the things that's one of the points that I've noticed about you, Johnny, is that you kind of lean towards more of these uh, full metal frame type of guns where I'm on the opposite side. I kind of like the polymer Glock, um, uh, M&Ps, and so on and so forth. Would you agree that we're kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum? We are. In the 90s, I moved across the country, and I made a tough decision professionally, if Jackie's still taking notes. And I moved across the country and right before I left, the night before I left, Uncle Ricky handed me a big fat Ruger 
P series and it felt like a handgun. And that was really, I think that, that was, the, I know the first handgun I ever owned and I'm still all about, I want a handgun to feel like a handgun. I can't stand plastic guns. I carry them. I carry them for protection, but they don't do nothing for me. You can't get me to talk glowingly about any plastic gun. I don't want a plastic gun. I own plastic guns, but they're just a tool, but they do nothing for me emotionally. I, I totally understand that. And a lot of people think that uh, with the plastic style guns that you lose some quality, you lose some ability to control like that. And, you know, I, I, I hate this. I hate to admit this, that I carried um, a Beretta 92F or an M9 for a number of years while I was in the military. When I was in Iraq, uh, that ended up being basically a lint and dust catcher because with the way that the open slide design is with the 92F, it just, it just, I don't know, it was like a dirt magnet. So we had to clean those every single day and I, I just couldn't stand it. Um, but I will have to say that with it being a, a full metal gun with a, you know, double single action and when you get it into where the hammer's locked back and you pull that trigger, I, it's a pretty sweet pretty sweet shooting gun. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm still not sold on the open, uh, slide design that Beretta has. So very interested to hopefully one day get together with you, Johnny, and shoot that, um, Jericho and see what that's all about and see what I can do to get into some of these CZs as well. Here's what I found interesting about the time that I went on my rant about uh, Andrew and his lack of a question. Somebody put a thumbs down on your, so I'm sorry I'm skewing your numbers, Mark, here on a Monday <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the other 17 people that have given me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you guys are able to, please um, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jackie, thank you so much. Uh, what would you, what would be a good AR for a beginner shooter? looking to get into shooting. So Johnny, you want to take that one first? Yeah, I think that's, that's a great question. I know that Jackie said on another program uh, earlier, uh, late last week, she said that she's uh, moving towards moving from pistols, maybe getting a little more familiar with the AR platform. I have been down this road a ton because on my channel, I do a lot of beginner AR stuff, a lot of budget builds, and I am a big, big believer in brands. I am not going to go shopping by price. I'm going to go by brands. The two that I really recommend is the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport 2 or the Ruger AR556. And it used to be the AR556 by Ruger was just a little bit cheaper, but now you can find that Smith & Wesson. So the go-to gun for me, and I've bought one of each, is that Smith & Wesson M&P Sport 2. Now, if you're going to trick it out and do all that customization, you need to get a, a, a different model. But if you're just wanting a sporter rifle, I think and you can't go wrong with that. It works, it fun it's functional, and you can trust it, and you can learn the AR platform with ease. It's ready to go right out of the box. What do you think, Mark? So I agree uh, with with those two, but I, I, I have kind of um, I kind of have a little bit of a different take because one of the reasons that um, I started this channel is because I've got you know I'm, I'm a budget guy and, and I like to be able to get in and talk about budget things. I'm a big fan of Palmetto State Armory. Uh, I'm a huge fan of their stuff. I've done a number of builds uh, with their uh, bolt carrier groups, uh, their barrels. Um, I haven't done any of their lowers and uppers. I, I like to stay with uh, arrow precision. So if I had to go into it, my three uh, recommendations that if you are um, at a very, very budget level, uh, I would look at Palmetto State Armory for their PA-15 or whatever they call it. That's going to put you in right about the $400, $500 mark, which is not too much less than than the uh, the Ruger and um, what was the other one you said? The um, Smith and Wesson M&P Sport Two. Yeah, yeah. So all three of those I think are, are really viable options. If you can spring for an Arrow Precision that's already built, I would highly recommend uh, doing that. But if you have the money and you're going to do a kind of cry once, buy once type of situation, I'd, I'd swing for the fences and go Daniel Defense all day long. 
I, I, I know. And you, you laugh at it. If Somebody got, asked, what's a good beginner rifle? And your answer is to go to Daniel Defense. No, I gave you a range. I started off with Palmetto State. We talked yeah, but about you ended with Daniel Defense. Holy yes. smokes. Yes, because if you want, you want a quality situation, this is something I've been dinged on with a couple of my videos. They said, you know, you know, the Palmetto State is crap or whatever the case may be. It, okay, so if you want quality and you're going to buy one rifle that's going to last you your entire life, I would say Daniel Defense. I mean, unless unless you're trying to go way over the fence, you got three thousand dollars to spend, and there's got Noveski and all these other ones. But for uh, something that's going to be, I would say probably reasonably priced, that's on the high end. Yes, Daniel Defense every day. Mm -hmm. I like that you stuck with your answer. I, I start digging you on your answer because it's kind of my job and you stuck with it. Not bad, Mark. Not bad. Yeah, you 40, yeah, you're yeah. making 40 look good. Yeah, I know. Well, see, here's the thing. In the military, you know, uh, they you have to go for to promotion boards in the army and they ask you a question like, uh, why is the sky blue? And you have to answer the question uh, with a straight face and it's because the sky is blue because the sun reflects off the water and makes the sky blue. So you could be completely uh, wrong, but you stick with that answer. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. A uh, lot coming in, in the chat room. People are saying uh, Aero Precision, uh, Big Al saying the Colt 6920, uh, several more Aero, uh, Aero Precision, a couple BCMs, the POF. Uh, I like that there is, we're in a good season right now. What do you think, Mark, that right now there are a ton of, Did I lose you? Yeah, you did lose me. There's a uh, ton of market uh, rifles available on the market right now for reasonably priced. We have a selection. Yes, it is definitely a buyer's market right now. Uh, I think the term that a uh, mutual friend of ours have used is the uh, normalization of the market when it comes to the firearms industry. And, uh, I, I, you know, there are companies out there. I think you just did a build from, what is it, five seven. Is that yeah, five seven. Uh huh. They uh, now the only parts from five seven that I had was the uh, strip lower and the strip upper together, and they were gorgeous, but they've got a good reputation. But I've never seen one of their complete rifles, mm. yeah. So, uh, I'm actually interested in checking them out to find out what uh, what's going on with them and, and understand um, kind of their nuances, what their climb to fame, um, you know, kind of their quality, and so on and so forth. I'm a big arrow arrow precision fan. I just love their stuff. They they build quality stuff. If you don't know arrow precision, um, they started in the aerospace industry and saw that the aerospace industry was starting to starting to dip down a little bit. So they were wondering what else can we get into, and they got into uh, milling out and building uh, ARs and AR components. So you can tell that there is a lot of attention to detail with them. Uh, and that's why I like them so much for kind of that mid-range AR. Uh, have you had any experience with the with the uh, arrows? Uh, no, I haven't. Peripherally through you because I watch your channel. And no, I have never owned any arrow precision parts. But I feel, here's what's funny is I feel very familiar with them. Uh, the ones that I'm kind of been moving towards right now is spikes. I've been doing, using a lot of spikes tactical gear lately. I've done a lot with bootleg uh, primary weapon systems. So, I mean, i plethora of different parts coming in uh, that I'm using on my different rifles, but I'm kind of leaning these days towards spikes. Um, Adam's arms. I had an Adam's arms rifle for about four months this summer and I was blown away. I really, really like that piston system. Mm. So, so many rifles, so little time. Oh yes, there is. And so little money for a yeah. lot of us too. So, um, the uh, one of the one of the questions that popped up too was AR pistol on a budget. Is there such a thing? Yes, there is such a thing, and it is calling it. it uh, it's all about building your AR pistol. Now you can go out and probably buy one from a manufacturer, but if you really want to control the price mark on an AR pistol, I really recommend looking into building one. Um, do you have a pistol AR pistol or? I currently do not have an AR pistol, but they come and they go. So right now yeah. the, 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 the cupboards are bare in the AR pistol world. They don't really do so, that much for me, to be honest. Uh, AR pistols, I know people are into them and I've got no problem. You guys get into them. I don't care. I don't make it go bang, but they don't do right. a lot for me because I don't want to hold it out here. I want it all the way up in here. So mm -hmm. I don't want to put up anything well, up against my cheek. Well, and, and that's, that's one of the great things with, the um, 
some of the new rulings or some of the new, um, oh, what's, what am I trying to say with ATF and their decisions on um, the pistol braces and stabilizers that, you know, you are able to shoulder them without changing the, the dynamics of the AR pistol. And so with that, there you see a lot of popularity with the shockwave brace and the SB tactical um, braces as well. With that being said, you know, I just did a video on uh, some budget uh, suppressors. And one of the cool things that uh, I came across was the Alliance suppressor it has a recessed um, um, nut that goes on to the end of your uh, barrel, which allows that suppressor to recess a little bit more. So it makes it hear, hearing safe. You can get it up nice and close to you and you don't have this you know, 16 ounce piece of metal on the uh, other side of it. So, uh, or at the end of your barrel. So those, those are some of the things that I consider. Again, back to the question, I would say, if you're interested in doing a pistol, I would say look into building one because you can do one very, very cheap if you know what you're looking for. Um, let's see. BR549 says, Big Al Saint Pistol question mark. Saint Pistol, yeah, it's a good idea, but um, it, you know, you're know, you looking at about $900 for an AR pistol. So what else? What other questions do you see there? Uh, Johnny, that we need to touch on. Well, I, I, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I got a couple for you since uh, I'm going to be able to ask you some questions. Let's do some rapid fire. Short answers, Mark. Short answers. I don't know if I can do that. I'm gonna if you start getting lost, if you start getting lost, I'm jumping in. <laughs> uh, so far, you've been a YouTuber for about seven months. What's been the coolest thing so far? Shot show, definitely. I can't, I can't, I can't go anywhere outside of Shot Show. That was the coolest experience ever. Of all, you've met a lot of uh, YouTube gun celebrities who's been, I know that you're not going to, you're going to leave everybody else out. I get it. But name one that's really stood out to you that you've met. Besides you, Johnny. <laughs> oh yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this. And oh, I know where this is going. It. You know where I'm going with this one. Yeah. So I would actually have to say, um, James Yeager. So I got a chance to meet James Yeager and uh, a lot of people, you know, there, there's James has a lot of haters out there and, um, you know, I can understand why he, he's a very, you know, alpha type of male. He, uh, he, he's not afraid to voice his opinion. Uh, okay. That's enough, Mark. I'm okay. jumping in. How about your beard? What about your beard? Is he going to trim it? You're going to, you're going to cut it all the way off. And I'm not jumping in because of James Yeager. I'm saying we're doing rapid fire. So I'm okay with your answer. It has nothing to do with James Yeager. James Yeager. We love you. Don't send me hate mail. What about your beard? <laughs> Uh, it's probably going to get trimmed. It's going to have to get trimmed here. Uh, you know, I, the, uh, the wife's coming out of the field. So, um, yeah, it's getting trimmed. Here, How so. cool is it that we have people on a Monday night? It's getting late on the East coast watching you and I yammer. I want to say a big thank you to everybody that is here. Thank you so much. What do you have to say to all of your followers? Anyone who's willing, maybe even on recording to watch this, this late into the show, what do you have to say to them? Thank you so much for the uh, support. You know, I know that I'm not as uh, up and coming as you are, Johnny, Stop. because of your <laughs> your gun gossip. But I, I just surely do appreciate everybody's support. You know, uh, I, I had a comment on my 2000-ish giveaway video that um, that they were they just thought two weeks ago I was at a thousand subscribers and now I'm at like over 2,300. And, and it's because of you guys, and I appreciate that. And that's why I do this. It's because of you guys. What's been the biggest surprise so far about being a YouTuber? Because I think being on the inside is very different than what we people on the outside think it is. What's been a surprise so far for you? Understanding how the industry works. That, that's probably one of the um, interesting things that has really shed a light in um, just my experience. We've talked about this, uh, you know, over the phone uh, with each other and, and understanding how, uh, how some people get it and how some people don't. And, and without your advice and guidance and your mentorship and all that jazz, Stop. you know, I, I, I'm, dead, I'm dead serious. Mm -hmm. Without your mentorship, it, it wouldn't really, uh, I would, you know, I'd, probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So good yeah. golly. People are listening to that. The mentorship. I told, I, I told Mark what camera to buy. He's like, what camera should I buy? I told him the camera and you fell apart. Buy a camera, buddy. Get on Amazon and buy a camera. 
All right, let me ask you this. Uh, what is one of your goals for 2018? If you're going to uh, maybe pay attention to me rather than the chat room for just a minute, if I can get Mark's attention, what is one of your goals for 2018 as far as specifically for YouTube? Um, training certification from the from at least the NRA. Jackie says, I need that you need short answers. Look at you, Mark. That was so good. That was such a good short answer. Look old at that. Old dogs, old dogs. What was the worst part of SHOT Show? The walking. Holy cow, the walking. Everybody says that. It must be legit. I've not been to SHOT Show. It must be legit. It's three levels. Three levels. Who's you your big man it. crush in the YouTube gun world? You, Johnny. Yeah, other than other than me, what's your, who's your man crush? Oh, oh, it's too easy, John Lovell. Oh man, I want to have his babies. <laughs> yeah, John Lovell is. I mean, he is. He's like the total package. He's so nice, and then, but he's also legit. He's absolutely legit. All right, what's your guilty pleasure in the YouTube gun world? Who do you watch uh, guiltily? Who do you, other than me? Who do you watch guiltily? Guilty pleasure. Uh, Adam Kraut. Uh, he's kind of dry, but you know, at the, at the same time, he puts out some really good uh, information. Yeah, um, and I don't think I want a lawyer who's going to be putting on a circus and wearing a feather boa. I want my lawyer to be give me the good information. He's he's absolutely amazing. Uh, what's a gun that you probably don't like to talk about, but that you kind of secretly like, even though people give you crap for it? Nineteen eleven. Why? Um, well, because I was raised uh, to have an appreciation for the 1911 from my dad. Um, and you know, it, it, it's a, it's a viable, it's a viable pistol even today. But, um, you know, one of the things that I'm kind of, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that my dad built me a 1911 and gave it to me when I came home from Afghanistan. It's one of my prized possessions. Um, and, yeah, I get a lot of flack from it sometimes. So We have a, a user I've already clicked away from it. Forgive me, but one of the users just said, how did you and I meet? Mark emailed me last uh, late spring, early summer, and just started asking about how to do YouTube and lighting and that sort of stuff. We started talking there. We started texting. We got to be friends. We went to Range Day in October down in Georgia, and here we are today. All right, Mark, what's one of your least favorite comments you've ever gotten in the comment section? Um. I got it uh, in regards to the Riker fist grip, and I got I got pretty much berated about not knowing anything and how everything that I said in that video was completely false. So, what's been uh, what's been one of your biggest triumphs in uh, YouTube? Because a lot of people don't know, there's a lot to running a YouTube channel. There's a lot of relationships, a lot of emails, a lot of uh, packages back and forth. There is a lot to this, even for smaller channels like me and you. What's been one of your triumphs? Being able to walk up, uh, especially at SHOT Show or even through email and being able to basically walk up to a company and understand how to present yourself and how to market it yourself and say, hey, my name is, this is what I do. I'd really like to support you guys because I believe in you. Who's your white whale? What company do you want to work with you've never got to work with before? Daniel Defense. <laughs> not bad, not bad. What's a YouTuber you want to do a project with that you've not got to connect with? Not got a chance to connect with. Um, I'm I'm going to say Grand Thumb. He's cool. He is <laughs> off the chart cool. <laughs> He's ridiculous. Uh, who is an overrated? Who's the most overrated YouTuber? Thou shall not be named. Thou shall not be named. That, I almost entitled that question with, this is a media savvy question. I wanted to see if you would actually answer it. Not bad, Mark. I think not saying that is probably a good one. Y'all can sound off in the comment section. Let us know who the most overrated YouTuber is besides Mark or myself. Okay, Mark, your turn. Take over. All right. So what has been your biggest triumph for your YouTube outside of gun gossip? I think for me, uh, I got into this a long time ago, a, a year ago, and uh, it was it was a while back before I'd even had any sort of real traction. Henry Rifles sent me a free 22. They didn't want anything for it. They just sent a letter, said, "Hey, we love what you're doing. Here's a 22." I I teared up. I still have the packing slip sitting up there. I think I want to frame it. Free free rifle. Back when I was, I'm not. I mean, I'm still a nobody. But even before I had any followers, thank you, Henry. Yeah, uh, Henry's. They're iconic, so anything from Henry, Henry would be awesome. I would just appreciate a sticker from him. That would be pretty cool. All right, so uh, what's your what's your biggest goal for 2018? 
I really want to have a good trip to the NRA in May. I just want to get down there. So I don't know if I can, but I'm going to do my best. That's a big one for me. And I want gun gossip. I want people to still laugh with gun gossip. I mean, people are laughing. I want them to keep laughing. I love when people say, hey, they're having fun. Even Andrew, I gave him a hard time and he's still been positive over the last little bit through there. So I like making people laugh. That's good. That's good. Um, we're we're going to have to start wrapping this up. I've it's it's eight nineteen, and I know we've been having a blast. Uh, but uh, I have a beautiful little girl that has to get to bed here in about ten minutes, and I haven't even started the shutdown procedure. So, <laughs> so I am going to say one more time: give me the very next, um, <laughs> give me the very next question. I'm going to answer one last question, the very next one that pops up, and let's see what we have to have to say here. Uh, yeah, Dad's here. Love you, Dad. Love you. Thanks so much for the uh, for the uh, 1911. Um, let's see. Thank you all. Well, that's you, Johnny. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. So let me go ahead and start um, closing this out real quick. Johnny, of course, naturally, thank you for taking your time. This was a kind of a last minute thing for me to pull you in here. And I really appreciate taking your time. Uh, anything you want to say uh, real quick before we get out of here? I just want to say, you know, I like to joke and make fun of people and make fun of you and your face, Mark, but happy birthday. Uh, you're important to me in my life and you are wow. important uh, to a lot of folks here. So I love you, Mark. I want to say thank you to everybody. I mean, I just think it is doggone cool. People are willing to log on and listen to me and you rattle. Uh, Y'all be safe out there. Uh, keep the Second Amendment strong. Uh, God bless our troops. And thanks so much for having me, Mark, and love y'all to everybody. Uh, yeah, I was. I just want to stay real quick. I got corrected by a GGLFGGG mark last live. So you told everyone that uh, there's 2,000 tables. Try 4,800. So if you guys are going to go down to Tulsa, there you go. Almost 5,000 tables. Enjoy. Anything you need should be down there. Uh, Johnny, again, thank you for your time. Real quick, I uh, just wanted to take a chance, uh, take a moment here to say number one is by all means go check out the CMAX. Um, donation and giveaways that they're doing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet, uh, on, on the interwebs and YouTube. Just type in CMAX and it'll all pop up. I'll have a link to the uh, youcaring.com website down in the description below. You guys can come back and revisit that. I really appreciate you supporting those guys and, and what they're trying to do. Also, if you haven't uh, done the 2,000, gotten in on the 2,000 subscriber giveaway, go back into my channel, check that out. I'm just giving away some free stuff for you guys. So by all means, check that out. And then on Instagram and Facebook, go check those out for me, Fit and Fire or Fit and Fire 7 8 on Instagram. I'm giving away a uh, Olight m 2 our um, warrior <laughs> EDC light. Uh, it's a great light. I love it. It'll be charged up for you and it's all yours. All you have to do is just um, follow the rules. I, I got it posted. Um, Johnny, you got the last word before we say goodbye. God bless America. You dang skippy and enjoy your scotch. Gentlemen, ladies, thank you so much for swinging by. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next time. Take care. Bye, y'all.